This is quite possibly my favorite thing that I've ever built. It's a custom design setup that lets you take eight two and a half inch drives, whether it's SATA, SAS, or even U.3, and connect them to any mini PC via a single cable, whether that's Thunderbolt, Oculink, or M.2, and turns it into a full-fledged desktop server. Today, I'm gonna to show you everything from the 3D design, the hardware used, and how it performs. Most importantly, I'm gonna answer three things. What is this? How did it come about? And why does it even exist? Oh, and uh, I have a whole nother uh, version of this to show off a bit later, so let's just get into it. Okay, first, what is it? Well, if you have the memory of a goldfish, this is a... But let's go a bit further. At the heart of this build, there are three things. A mini PC, an HBA, and a backplane. These are the core ingredients to make this entire thing work. I'm using this 8-bay HP backplane that comes in quite a few flavors, and while I wish I could tell you the differences between all the different models, I can't because there doesn't seem to be any good documentation on them. From what I can tell, there are two versions of this one. There's one that has a single connector and one that has four. I feel like there are different model numbers for each of these, but I'm guessing those are all the same. I, I don't know. Here's the exact one I got. You can usually find them on eBay for around $150 to $200, and they'll sometimes come with a cage and power connector. But this is a crucial piece of the puzzle here and is what makes everything possible because this backplane is a tri-mode backplane that can accept SATA, SAS, or U.3 drives. Yes, U.3, not U.2. When I first got this, I just assumed that U.2 drives would work, and um, they don't. So if you plan on building this and wanted to use NVMe drives, make sure they're U.3. For me, it was pretty easy to get some. I just went to server part deals and snagged a bunch of these one terabyte U.3 Micron drives. Drives? Drives. Server part deals actually had the best price around for these, and while they are sponsoring this part of the video, that only came about after I bought the drives and then reached out like, hey, I bought some of these drives. It probably would make a good sponsor segment. And they were like, okay. So yeah, I actually use server part deals all the time, so go check them out if you're looking for some awesome prices on some recertified drives that come with a warranty and free two-day shipping. I really can't say enough good things about them, but I'm gonna stop now because we have to get on with the video. The next thing you need is an HBA. You will need a tri-mode HBA to take the signal from the backplane and send that to the mini PC. We're using an LSI 9508i that I got off eBay for $160. Now, obviously, this is a PCIe card, and obviously, most mini PCs don't have PCIe slots. And I have seen some companies come out with cool external docks for connecting PCIe cards, but those are usually bulky and require their own power supply, and blah. Now, here is where the fun starts. Since PCIe really is just a protocol that can be transmitted over different physical connections, we have a few options for this part, each having their pros and cons. The first one is Thunderbolt. I've had this PCIe to Thunderbolt adapter for a while now, and I think I got it off AliExpress like three years ago. It basically does exactly what it sounds like. It lets you plug in a PCIe card and connects that to whatever machine you have via Thunderbolt. I'd say this is probably the easiest option since most modern PCs are coming standard with USB 4 or just have Thunderbolt 3 ports. I will also say that this is the most finicky since it's just Thunderbolt. From personal experience, Thunderbolt works great, when it works, but it can be flaky. For example, this exact setup using Thunderbolt works great in Linux, but doesn't work at all in Windows. Couldn't tell you why. But the next option is Oculink, and I'd say this is probably the best overall option if your mini PC has an Oculink port, which is pretty rare. I will say that I have seen a few PCs come out with Oculink ports, so if you're building this and want the best compatibility and fastest speeds, that'll be the way to go. I do hate that this one has an Oculink port, but it's on the front. Like, why? Who needs easy access to Oculink? It's really not that big of a deal, but I just had to find something to complain about. Similar to the Thunderbolt setup, you can just get a PCIe to Oculink adapter, and one cable is all you need. Note that both of these do require external power, whether that's SATA or Molex power, but we've got that covered as you'll see in a bit. The last option is good old M.2. It's pretty common to see M.2 to PCIe adapters being used to make use of those extra M.2 slots on some machines, so this one probably makes the most sense. And you do get great compatibility since it's just a direct connection like Oculink, 
The problem is often physically accessing it. I'd say this mini PC is about as easy as it gets since the M.2 slots are right under the bottom panel and the cable can just sneak out as long as you don't tighten the screws down all the way. But many PCs aren't that easy and could be a huge pain in the ass. So obviously just go with whatever one works for you, including the mini PC. And honestly, I just chose this one since it had the ability to show off all three options. Realistically, only one needs to work for you. From there, we have our setup. Our PC can run whatever OS we want and seize the drives individually as if they were connected directly to the system. I mentioned before that Oculink gives you the best speed and that is because if we look at how the PCIe connection works, we'll see that when using Oculink, we get four lanes of PCIe Gen 4, while Thunderbolt gets us four lanes of PCIe Gen 3. That's eight gigabytes per second versus four gigabytes per second respectively. And while we didn't see those exact numbers during a speed test, I did see pretty much half the speed when going from Oculink or M.2 to Thunderbolt. Take that for whatever it's worth. Now let's talk about the how. And yes, I did kind of just get into that, but there is a bit more to explain. More so the design and how everything's powered. The mini PC and backplane parts were easy in that the backplane just needed a mount and the mini PC just needed something to sit on. The hard part was figuring out the power and well, I guess the backplane mount wasn't that easy. So for the power, I ended up using one of these SFF 500 watt power supplies because I like the form factor and I could easily access various connectors and 12 volt rails. Because at the end of the day, we have four things to power. The mini PC, the backplane, the fans, and the PCIe adapter. And since the PCIe adapter and the fans use SATA or Molex, that's easy peasy since we just use the ones from the power supply. The backplane though, uses a proprietary HP connector that looks like a shrunken down six pin GPU connector. Fortunately, I found some random forum post where someone was doing something very similar and managed to find the pin out for this. And luckily it only needs two 12 volt and two ground pins. These are abundant on standard ATX power supplies and I ended up using the GPU connector for this since they're designed to carry a decent amount of power via 12 volt. To get the power from the GPU connector and into the backplane, we had to do some work though. I bought a GPU power extension cable and cut that to give me a female connector on one end and exposed wires on the other. From here, I could just connect my two 12 volt and two ground from the GPU plug to the corresponding backplane pins. I used these solder seals for that and they worked great. I now have a new backplane power connector that lets me power it via any six pin GPU connector. Neat. And the last thing I needed to power was the mini PC. This specific one uses 19 volts, which we can't get from our power supply. Luckily, we can buy a buck converter that takes the 12 volt input and outputs 19 volts. For the 12 volt input, I used the 12 volt pins from the 24 pin connector. And for the output, I got some generic barrel connectors to make it easy to connect to the mini PC. And just like that, we have everything powered via a single power supply. You don't technically need to do this since you could just use the power supply that comes with your mini PC, but I wanted it to be a bit cleaner. For the power switch, I'm just using a generic one off of Amazon that hooks into the 24 pin connector on the specific pins that control the power supply. So when I turn it on, everything gets turned on. And now that everything's powered and I knew exactly what hardware I was using, I could design the chassis. I will say that I am getting better at 3D design, but I'm still a long way from where I'd like to be. I'm probably limited by using Tinkercad and I'll probably need to learn Fusion or something, but I just don't have the time or patience to invest right now. This design is broken out into, I guess, four pieces. The backplane mount was probably the most difficult, not because mounting a rectangle is hard. That was easy. The hard part was figuring out how mounting the drives was going to work. You see, this backplane is designed to sit in a cage, and that cage has specific caddies to put your drives into that lets them slide in like I did with your mom last <laughs> I didn't want to rely on needing those, so I made something custom that works pretty much the same way. The backplane mount has slots for each drive, and each drive needs just these generic brackets screwed on, and they'll slide right in. Is it the sexiest solution? No, but if I take my shirt off, Still no. However, this actually works great from big old 15 millimeter U.3 drives to nine millimeter SAS drives to skinny ass SATA drives. Mount works on all of them and they can fit snugly into place. The next step was the power supply and mini PC section. I actually used this power supply on another project so I already had the mount designed for it. I ended up mounting that to the bottom and just put the mini PC on top of that. 
Fun fact, this entire chassis is exactly the height of a 2U space, so if you want to throw this on a shelf in your rack, there you go. But if your mini PC extends the height like mine does, you may need 3U. Then just behind the mini PC is our buck converter, mainly because I didn't know where else to put it. And this works fine, but it does get in the way sometimes of the cables on my mini PC. Another thing is that the power supply mount is a separate piece so that you can take it off and slide it in because I couldn't think of a good way to mount it once everything was put together and wired up. So this just makes things easier. Last is the PCIe mount, and this is legit just a flat piece of plastic. I didn't want to create a custom mount for each option, so I figured you can just double-sided tape your adapter down and call it a day. Yes, it's lazy, I know, and if that bothers you, suck my butt. Everything is held together with some heat-tapped mounts and super glue. In the future, I'd like to clean it up a bit, but for right now, version 1, I think it's pretty good. And all the files used for everything in this video are linked down below. I'll try to break everything out as well and give y'all a clean version of the backplane mount in case y'all want to customize it yourself. Anyways, that's what this is. That's how it works. Let's talk about why. Why did I do this? Outside of it being a fun project and helping me get better at 3D design, I did have a real reason. You see, I've been getting into more projects that utilize U.2 drives, and this is awesome, but what isn't awesome is trying to find an easy way to connect U.2 drives to a test system. A lot of the times you need expensive hardware or fancy servers. I wanted something small and easy and power efficient. And speaking of power efficient, this entire setup, mini PC, converter, PCIe card, and all eight drives are only using 60 watts. And that part is cool, but what obviously didn't end up working was that this backplane doesn't support U.2 drives, but that's okay. I think at the end of the day, the product I ended up with and what I learned more than makes up for that. I think this design could be cleaned up a bit and allow a bunch of you out there to realistically get some use out of this. And like I said before, this thing supports SATA, SAS, and U.3. So if you have a bunch of those laying around and you want something like this, I think this would be a great way to use them without getting too wild and crazy with your setup. Now, I am aware that the backplane and HBA aren't cheap though. Not really sure what to do about that. But I do know there are cheaper backplanes out there if you don't need tri-mode. And obviously a non-tri-mode HBA would be cheaper as well. But at the end of the day, I made something that I am proud of, and it's something that I will actually use moving forward. However, as I was teasing this project, a lot of you mentioned that it would be cool to have a rack-mounted version, so, um, I did that too. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm still waiting on the other backplane to come in, but you, you get the gist. But this version is also different in that it ditches the mini PC for a standard ITX motherboard, which does allow us to get rid of the buck converter and PCIe adapter card, greatly reducing the complexity of the system. I'll include the 3D files for this too, but again, you could probably use some cleaning up and someone with some actual 3D design know-how. I actually ordered some parts to create a version that uses two backplanes in a 16i HPA, so I'm trying to see how I want to do that to get 16 drives in a little power efficient system, but let me know if y'all are interested in that journey. But yeah, that's my project. I'm extremely happy with it, and while I know it's not perfect, it's something I made myself and it works great. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Is this something you'd be interested in building? If you like this video, then drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more projects. I actually have one that's already done, not this, uh, a different one. It's pretty cool. Just got to finish the testing. So subscribe if you want to be around for that one. It's going to be awesome. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my 8 bay custom tri mode NAS that totally works with U.2 drives as well. Y'all don't discriminate. And if you're still watching, you're a buck converter. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.